record and then make sure we're good here awesome and then i'll i can do the intro and everything later so we'll just hop in with like welcoming you to and get going so awesome so welcome to the conversation of our generation beth and Teresa. i'm excited to have you here from free from feminism uh i think it'd be good to go ahead and just give us a little bit about yourselves if you want to tell us who you are and what you're doing Hi, thanks for having us. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Beth. Um, we host the podcast Freed from Feminism. Uh, the main purpose of this podcast is essentially um, just to talk about the errors of feminism that we've seen in this world and how mainly to help other women um, and also to inspire men as well, but to help them escape from feminism and its ideologies and to really embrace true femininity found in the Catholic Church. Uh, just a little bit of background on myself. Uh, I used to work as an engineer for a couple of years before I left. I'm now married and I have a baby and I stay at home with him full time. So it's been very exciting. Um, I'm Catholic myself. I attend a Melkite Catholic parish um, and that's that's about it. So I hand it over to Teresa. Hi, um, my name is Teresa. I you may need to get close to the microphone here. Um, my name is Teresa. I, um, let's see, I am uh, a wife and a mother now. I spent uh, all of my 20s uh, in a career centered around politics and government. Um, and uh, at the end of it, kind of just decided I had enough. I was pretty miserable and just, you know, took a leap of faith and, um, you know, I, I did a, a few months in Europe and then decided I want to move there full time uh, and do and do something with music. And uh, as I was moving there about three weeks beforehand, I met my husband. So that never happened, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, so that brings us to today with just like Beth, I'm very happily married with um, a little baby, baby oh, girl. That's that's awesome. And so you both talked about your podcast, Free From Feminism. What's kind of the general gist of what you two talk about there and what, uh, what the project's about? Um, you can, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and take this. So um, the main idea, as I mentioned previously, is to just help women escape feminism and really embrace true femininity. And so we've done different episodes uh, on topics like women in the military, should women be in the military? Um, sometimes we try to do practical things like, you know, being a stay-at-home mom and how does that affect you? Or, or you're in the workforce still, but you long for marriage. How do you handle that? Um, uh, or more of those controversial topics like women in the workforce, should they be there? And things like that. Uh, uh, we just, we really are trying to center ourselves also around the teaching of the Catholic Church um, into which while we are both Catholic ourselves, we are not experts on theology and, <laughs> you know, even, even more in depth things, like also in depth things like philosophy behind feminism and stuff like that, the historical implications. Um, so we usually have guests on there to kind of be the main sources. Um, mm -hmm. Cause while we have found feminism affecting our lives and the lives around us, we know we don't have the authority all the time <laughs> to be teaching others, but really we see that there's a need for this because when we looked for a podcast that had anything to do with feminism and being against it or its ideologies, it's just, there's a few things, but there's not many. And so since we saw that hole there and we had some spare time, we figured, you know, why not bring this out there and encourage other women because we wanted encouragement ourselves in our lives. For sure. That's awesome. Absolutely. And it, it was so strange because it seemed like this was the largest elephant in the room that absolutely no one was talking about. And we saw these, these young women having absolutely no options other than, well, of course you're going to go into a career. Of course you're going to go lean in. You're going to go change the world. You're going to be president of the United States, etc. cetera. And, um, motherhood and, and, and wifedom, you know, <laughs> being a wife and a mother are almost never part of that equation. Mm -hmm. It's completely 
taken away from any options. Or if it is, it's just kind of like an aside. It's just, oh, well, you can do that while having a career. You can do that. Um, you can have it all, right? So we wanted to just even just start the conversation, especially for these younger women who have the time and have the option to say, maybe I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It is possible to say no to this. Yeah, that makes sense. That's awesome. I'm glad, uh, you know, I, my wife is studying to be a nurse and it's definitely something discussion that we've had is like, okay, how do we handle that when kids come around? We just got married last October. And so I am probably, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And so I'm probably more aligned with you guys. She is definitely, uh, a little bit on the fence. And so definitely wants to be, I was like, I want 12 kids, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And she's like, let's okay. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, yeah. So she's like, you're not the one giving birth to the kids. So let's, well, <laughs> uh, but so to give me a little bit of insight, then why you kind of have a bold claim here. Why should we reject feminism outright instead of dissecting the different ways and everything like that. Why, why just whole cloth feminism, free from feminism? Do you want me well, to go you, first? Yeah, I'll let you, yeah. you always give a good summary. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you use it. Well, in, in my opinion, we must reject feminism as an ideology. Mm -hmm. What we try to emphasize, it's, it's not about the women. It's not, we're not trying to attack women. We're trying to shed light on an evil ideology that has taken a hold of women and taken a hold of our families and taken a hold of men as well. And we believe that it is evil at its root. Mm -hmm. And so talking about all the different forms of feminism, all the different waves, et cetera, you know, it, it can be helpful at some times, but it, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. And because it is evil from its inception, I, and why it is evil from its inception is because it, it basically, it glorifies the masculine in women. Mm -hmm. It glorifies that, and, and it encourages women to be masculine, therefore upending and destroying the family dynamic and, and, and it causes us to reject our own natures and you know, as we all know, if the family unit is torn, it torn it tears the rest of society. And so it 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 we must talk about it as as the very fundamental ideology. Otherwise it never will get fixed in 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 the in the society or in individual relationships. And um to add to that, people try to redo feminism like she said and kind of cherry pick the good things out of it you know christian feminism catholic feminism whatever you want to call it uh they say well we're all about we're equal in dignity and we also encourage the complementarity between men and women but we have this new kind but like she says its inception was never about women it was always about women becoming more masculine men have things that women don't have we want them to you know they can vote uh, they can, you know, have sex whenever they want to with no consequences and, you know, which there are for men too, but like they just wanted to be in men's shoes instead of embracing what was truly given to them uh, by God. You know, the fact that women can bear children and bring new lives into this world is just incredible. And instead of embracing that, they rejected it and turned to what the men were doing. Mm -hmm. And also, I like to always say with Catholic feminism or Christian feminism, is that they tell women, well, just, it's your choice. Do what you want. If God is calling you to start a business, start a business, you know, become a lawyer, do whatever you want. But they're not realizing that this isn't necessary. I mean, the Blessed Virgin, all she was, was a housewife. And she wasn't out there preaching with the apostles. She, I mean, her effect on the world is incredible. You can do so much by just raising children. And now if women want to do something on top of their, um, their life as a mother and a wife, um, it should never interfere in telling women like, oh, well, you can just do anything. It's not right. I mean, I, I personally have experienced this myself with a child. I thought, oh, well, I could do a little something on the side. It'll be no problem. 
children mm-hmm. are so much work, like <laughs> and good work, <laughs> but it's like you, it's very hard. And in, in knowing that like, if I were to have stayed in a career leaving my child for that long a day, I mean, even if you want to get into the scientific things about it, like children in the care of somebody else, you know, between the ages of zero and three research shows that they're attached to one person. Are you ready to give your kid up to a stranger at daycare or even your own mother? Do you want them to be with them that long a day and not you, you're the best mother for your kid, you know? And so that's why we reject feminism in its entirety is because everything it's tried to do is take women away from this, this role of wife and mother and it's and how beautiful it is and tell them that it's not enough. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. And that's the evil of feminism right there, Beth. It's, it teaches women to hate their own nature. Mm-hmm. Since when did feminine characteristics and values and, and um, how, since when is that bad? Why mm-hmm. is that a curse word all of a sudden? To be meek, to be humble, <laughs> which obviously men can be humble. That's not, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, to, to be, sorry. So it's not their strong suit generally. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be, what, what is another um, womanly characteristic to, to be gentle, to be kind. All these other words that describe us now are literally masculine terms, empowered, powerful, independent, strong, um what else more many more yeah leaders <laughs> leaders how how many times are we told women should be leading things you know those are quite literally manly characteristics that's in your nature to do that and so it is as best so wonderfully said it's just it's teaching us that we're just not good enough yeah and it's funny to me because especially as a catholic as well you know, we'll say that the the best thing that God ever created was Mary, that she is the pinnacle of creation because obviously Jesus was not created. Um, and so like if God holds up the pinnacle of, femini- of femininity and of womanhood as his greatest creation, I think that there's something to be said about that, that her receptivity to God, her humility, her ability to say yes to God's plan was something that we should all take from her and like emulate. And I think that that is something that men do not have inherently and that we really do have to learn is that humility, that saying, saying yes to God instead of saying yes to our will and trying to impose ourselves and kind of aligning that, you know? And the other thing that strikes me of what you've been talking about is I think there's assumptions that were made initially in feminism that were being made elsewhere. It kind of arose, it seems to me around the same time that, Marxism did as well and others where a misunderstanding of equality came about that you know people have to be not equal in dignity as we've talked about you know respect for before the law but equal in kind like men and women don't have any differences they are you know it's like saying two equals two not you know it's not the same kind of thing it's they're two different types of people I mean so I think that that's had an effect as well on how we deal with family life. And so if if you can kind of explain how feminism has affected family life by kind of confusing those roles, confusing that equality that there is. Beth, or if you want to go. (laughs) Um, Yeah, you're right. It's, they don't like to recognize them. When they do recognize the differences, they, they're like, Oh, almost, Oh gosh. One of our interviews said this, it was, um, Layla Miller and Leanne Abel, where they said, feminism, it's not about men and women are equal. It's men and women are equal, but women are actually better. Like, they always try to say that, like, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. The baby's crying in the background. <laughs> um, that, like, oh, well, women are just so, like Teresa said, so powerful and they can do so much in the world, which is true, but, like, like it's humility. We need to be humble about ourselves. We are a beautiful creation, but we, we can't be putting ourselves on this pedestal above men because men are important too. Uh, and we need to recognize those differences and how they work. Because if you put two things, like if you 
if women act more manly like they do in feminism and they're against the man in a relationship, there's always going to be struggle. There's always going to be fighting to lead, to provide, but that's not what the woman is supposed to be doing. She is supposed to be serving her family as best she can, humbly, meekly, doing all these things that are like in the background, but they have such a huge effect on the world. Everybody, everybody always remembers their childhood. Wouldn't you want to make your childhood the best you can for your child by always being there for them? You know? And um, yeah. So. Exactly right. I, I agree. It's the basic assumptions, like you, you said, Nick, to me is that feminism is good. That's the unspoken rule in our society that, of course, feminism is good. And it's, it's no longer talked about. And it, the fact that we are freeing and empowering women, it's, it's wrong because what we're actually doing is we're enslaving them. Mm-hmm. And that sounds just like rhetoric, right? It just sounds like, oh, wow, she's a rad trad. She's crazy. Or they're, you know, it, but just like Beth said, our natures are complementary, but they are not the same. And when you create this competitive nature within the most sacred relationship in the world besides your relationship with God, I mean, of course it's going to cause friction. Of course it's going to cause disharmony in the family. And that obviously is, is the problem. And I think like we've mentioned before, once you create that tension, once you destroy that, that unity within the marriage and thus the family, it just trickles down into all of society. So, um, we are enslaving ourselves in the sense of like all these lies that people tell us that, you know, the career will fulfill us, you know, leaning in and, and, you know, motherhood and, and being a wife are really just, you know, you don't really talk about them. You know, if you want to, okay, I guess, you know, if, but it's when the last time you saw a glowing review of, you know, being a wife during um, the COVID crisis, but, we're teaching women to, to think that our career is more important than our family. And it's really enslaving us. I mean, literally that, that mentality of, of, um, we have to be like a male is saying that a corporate, a corporation cares more about you than your husband. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, a. Thomas Aquinas will talk about being a slave to your passions. And it seems like feminism is trying to instill more and more like ambition and have women follow their ambition. But really that's a movement of your, like that's an ambition is no different than your anger or your love. It's just a movement of your emotions, of your passions. And so as you if you just follow those blindly and you don't direct them towards the ultimate good, then you are enslaving yourself to the whims of whatever you feel. And I think you see that a lot in every aspect of our culture, but I think that feminism definitely imparts that a lot on women. Uh, And so how has it taught women to seem to kind of dislike their uh, children or to kind of put aside their children or, you know, even reject fertility in a lot of ways and push, I think, it seems to me that it's pushed, you mentioned that it's kind of put women in a position where they think their corporation cares more about them than their husband, but they also seem to care more about their, you know, billing hours a lot of times as a lawyer than they do their billing hours as a mother being home with their child, <laughs> which you don't get, you know, you don't get any payment for, but other than, you know, much more than what you can, than money. But how has it kind of taught women to put aside or dislike even their children and their natural fertility. Well, as we've said, like it, it tells women that having children and being a mother is not enough. And when we see the secular um, feminism and its history, as Teresa said, you know, like people are trying to break it apart, but it's bad at its ideology. I mean, when people say, oh, well, first wave feminism wasn't so bad, you know, first wave feminism went into birth control, like almost immediately after suffrage, um, because they 
they wanted more for women. Oh, now that women can vote, oh, oh, we should, you know, we should have birth control for everybody. Um, and that right there is, is against children. You know, it's, it's interacting the natural way of life and creating children into this world. Um, and all of these things have just aided feminism so that women can, you know, it's, it's supposed to be freeing, you know, we can just go out into the world now. We can only have 1.3 kids and, you know, we can both work and live in our house with our picket fence and everything, but it's not freeing. Children are beautiful and to just choose your own selfish desires in the name of helping society because I have a career, which, okay, I, when I was in engineering school and even working as an engineer, they tell you all the time, like, oh, we're helping people. We're designing these life-saving devices. And yes, in ways you are, but you're also serving that corporation. Like, I don't know if... I, I think men probably realize it sometimes too, because everybody wants to retire. You realize when you work, like all my coworkers were like, just count on the days to retirement. And yet feminism is telling them how glorious this life is at a desk in front of a computer, <laughs> like nine hours a day. It's so boring. <laughs> it's just, you're okay. Maybe eventually you're helping people, but to, you know, hold a baby and love them that I feel like I'm just doing more helping that baby. And the qualities you need to go out there into the workforce or more manly. I think men, they like working together in those um, environments. Usually I'm kind of sad that like men don't have this kind of masculine in their workforce anymore. It's just kind of like sitting at the computer all day. Um, but they like being with each other and, you know, encouraging each other in that way. Uh, but like women, we, we love babies. Like we want to be with the children and all, all the time and just, okay, I'm losing my train of thought, but yes. <laughs> so your question was, how was, yeah, how, how is, is feminine? How has feminism taught you women to uh, dislike their children or reject their fertility to kind of reject um, that part about themselves? Yeah, I'm obviously Beth completely, um, I can't add much to that, but I, I'll just add that, um, we are taught that from the day that we're born. Like from the day that we're born, the indoctrination starts. I think I, as I mentioned earlier, when, when people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hmm. What, what is the expected answer? Doctor, lawyer, astronaut, hmm. you know, firefighter, whatever. But how many times, first of all, why are we ask, why are we asking that question to women? I mean, that's, that's, that's probably controversial, but it's just like, why is that not just a wonderfully implicit thing in being a woman of, well, of course, you guys are doing the most wonderful thing in the entire world. Why would you want to be anything else? You know, <laughs> why would you want to, you know, reject the fact that you have the opportunity to participate with God Almighty in creating another human. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just insane to me. But our society on all levels tells women from the very first moment they are born that that is stupid, it's unglamorous, you won't be happy, everything else is so much more exciting and interesting. And, you know, stay at home mothers really are just, you know, bored, bored and unfulfilled. And, um, well, yeah, you created what you, what you were asking for right there because, you know, women who may stay at home who are unfulfilled, it's because we're thinking, wow, well, everyone else is kind of having more fun than me and they're not looking at their children how we should. We're not looking at ourselves how we should. We're not looking at our, our, our husbands as we should. So mm -hmm. it, I will mention just one thing. I mean, it, for an example of, of how we're indoctrinated, um, it kind of goes to, you know, talking about the, uh, how it affects men specifically, but it also affects women in just take, take, uh, the TV sitcoms that we watch, even starting in the 60s. I'm talking about the old stuff. Obviously now it's just blatant now, but when's the last time that you saw a sitcom that in which the husband was not mocked? 
mm-hmm. and derided and treated like a child? Uh, it's very rare. <laughs> it is definitely very rare. I mean, I, for, for an example, it's just a personal pet peeve of mine is um, everybody loves Raymond mm-hmm. as he's just kind of like the dumb goof, yeah. you know, Oh, just everyone loves Raymond. He's so stupid, but we love him anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a, he's a father and he's a husband and he gets nagged into oblivion by this, his wife and his mother. And so what that does, obviously that, that treats men horrifically but it also teaches women to look at men like that as a child you think wow i can't trust i can't trust my father i can't trust men um this is how i treat you know it it seems stupid because it's just a television show really get over yourself like how much influence is this really going to have a lot it has a lot of influence because it's everywhere it's not just one television show it's all the television shows Mm -hmm. it's in every magazine and it's most importantly it's lived out in the family union yep off my soapbox yeah no (laughs) you make sense too because even the tv shows i think of where the men is it like the man is in um you know like uh picked on like that or nagged or put down they're just kind of this background whatever figure like the show i'm thinking of it's not as popular as everybody loves raymond but the wonder years the dad just like oh, yeah. is in the background just like whatever grumpy go to work he's not leading his family he's not you know emulating this strong figure like saint joseph was to mary it's just kind of like he's either nagged or he's just whatever you know grumpy dad in the background I can think of one good one example, and that's uh, Uncle Phil in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I think he was a really, really solid. Uh, and <laughs> that's I haven't true. seen the show, but <laughs> I'll take your word. You've never it, seen yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Oh, I don't know. Probably watched it like once when I was a child. I, I can know. literally <laughs> wrap the intro to that. <laughs> it was on Nickelodeon all the time. It came on like, right after uh, Full House, and so I'd stay up to like. Uh, stay up for it. All right. <laughs> But no, I love Fresh Prince, and so he's a really great example to me. And I think Bill sure. Cosby, as well as bad as he is in real life, in the Cosby Show, I think was he was goofy and fun, but he still had that kind of uh, authority of his family. I think so. But I so yeah, I think that that's definitely interesting. I think that I mean, obviously, if there's a union between a man and woman, that's lifelong. If you have to have a lifelong friendship, if there's something out of whack with either person and how they treat each other it's going to affect the other person. And so I guess as uh, I think it would probably be good to kind of get some advice from you too, because I think you deal with this a lot. And what are things that men, maybe men and women can do to push back against the indoctrination that you talked about some of these things and really have that moment where they free themselves from feminism? Well, I think the main and the first one is find your vocation. Yes, it's, it's very difficult. We both went through it trying to find somebody to marry when it feels like there is nobody in this world who um, aligns with your values um, and your personality too. And so it's very difficult and I'm very thankful that I had found my husband. Uh, and I just I encourage all men and women to find this, to just pray, be patient, um, give it to God. Uh, even if you're just a little hesitant, and you want to try something like just visit a religious order. If you are kind of inclined to do that or get out there and date as much as you can. Um, because that's, that's where I think it starts. So I'm not saying you can't find holiness as a single person. That's something all entirely, but it's, it's just, it reaches its highest point. I think when you're in your vocation, because that's what the church tells us is that is how we can grow in holiness is building our vocation. So if you are in one, which most listeners are probably married as a woman myself, I find that the more I learn about feminism, whether I'm reading even just a secular book, I mean, secular people are catching on to it's, you know, bad things too. Um, you just reading it and thinking about how it's affecting my life and my marriage and how I can be a better wife and mother. And it's, I'm not saying I'm, perfect at all. I mean, I say this, but like, it's very hard. As Teresa says, we've grown up with this. We've grown up with all of these things that tell women to be empowered or nagging or whatever. And so just to push it aside as often as you can and to repent when you fail um, and just 
embrace the beauty of motherhood. And as a man too, they can do that too, embracing the beauty of fatherhood and providing and protecting your family in the best way you can. Um, and I think it's just at the roots of all holiness, it's prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So if you really want to reject feminism, you just become a better Catholic and become a better Catholic. You just do more prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I could say. I like it. And if you're not a Catholic, start by becoming a Catholic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hallelujah to that. I'm a convert. So I, I agree with that. I, I mean, I, I can't add much to what, what um, Beth said. I think finding your vocation will um, be so instrumental in that. The only thing I will add is maybe for those women who um, have the opportunity to change their life right now, don't be afraid to do almost anything to reject feminism no sacrifice will not be worth it, no matter how big, whether you have to move in with your parents, whether you have to quit your job, whatever you have to do, it will be worth it. It will be worth it. So don't be afraid to go against the culture and, and um, be happy. <laughs> um, and if you're already in that position of, let's say you're in a career, you've been to college, et cetera, um, don't ever lose hope because it's never too late. You can change your life right now. You can make the sacrifices necessary and move on. And let me tell you again, it is so, so, so worth it. And I think both of us will, will attest to that of um, your happiness level, your level of inner peace, your spiritual life will flourish like it never has before. Um, so never lose hope though. I mean, it can be so lonely and so hard, but, um, our lady is right there holding your hand through all of this. She's not going to leave you alone and she will show us the way to true femininity. Mm -hmm. She will. And to men, um, we love you. We respect you. And also don't be afraid to be masculine either. Um, you know, there are women out there who will appreciate you for who you are. So be that chivalrous man, be that virtuous man, even if everyone around you doesn't understand it and doesn't treat you well, Christ sees it, Our Lady sees it, and he has the vocation for you and the woman for you or the religious order for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you. I think that's a great note to end this on. I'm looking at my Zoom meeting and it is running out of time. So. Thank you too for coming on. And I think that was awesome. So I really appreciate it. And they can find you at freedfromfeminism.com, correct? Is that, or don't do you have a website just yet? But yes, uh, Freed Feminism is our Twitter handle, which is probably our most used communication, or freedfromfeminism at gmail.com if you want to send us a personal message. Awesome. Well, I will add all those links as well in the show notes. So thank you too for coming on and have a great rest of your weekend and we'll uh hopefully be in touch again you too thank you awesome. thanks